welcome back welcome back in this one i'm going to be doing a function and a return value very very simple but could be very very helpful for general python programmers maybe not so much for unit 6 microcontrollers but let's jump into this so my notes here i say let me zoom in i say create a function which adds two numbers together and returns a value so let me do it under that one there so i'm going to create a function and again to create a function you do def define then the name of the function i'm going to call addition right now before we do anything else inside the function what we need to do we need to pass it the arguments so let's say for, for argument's sake, I wanted to add only two numbers together. That's what I've said here. I could pass it three, but I'm going to say two. So I'm going to add num1. I'm going to say num2. Now, please note that in here, we do not put a plus sign. We simply pass it the things that we want to add later on. So again, we define, which is def. We give the name of the function and we pass in the two values that we want to add. So what I'm going to say inside this function, inside the indentation section, is simply uh, return num1 plus num2. You can put this in brackets if you want. It's not really necessary. And that's it. You're done. The way this works, all I've done here now is created the function. I haven't used it yet. So the way this works is whatever two numbers I pass into this function, it will actually give me a result. So this is the use case of where printing addition makes sense. In a previous video, I said that some people print functions. So if I simply do addition and I run it, it's going to give me an error. Nothing happens because it's missing two arguments. But let's just say for argument's sake, I put in here 10 and I put 20. When I run it, nothing still. Even though this doesn't give an error, it doesn't give me an output. And this is where you'd want to print the output of this function. So you do print addition and you put your two numbers in um, brackets, press F5 and that's when you get your result. But I'm going to go back and explain all of this again. So I define my function. So I say DEF, which tells me that anything that comes after this is going to be the name of my function. In this case, it's called addition. I put open bracket and close bracket. And inside those brackets, I pass it two arguments. You can name these variables, whatever you want. Um, I've opted for num1 and num2 just because it's easier to work with. And what I've said is return the value of number one added to number two. So uh, this is where I would probably have a comment that says add the numbers given together and return the value and return value, right? Whatever you want to add there. In the comment here, I would probably put something like define function. Um, F U N C T I O N and pass values needed, right? I've passed it to two variables. Let's say down here is where I've actually called my function called function and uh, print value to screen or value to shell actually shell not screen because down here is called a shell, but you can say to screen as well. It really doesn't matter. And that's how you do that. So whatever two numbers I give it in here. So here I have my print. I have addition. I have my open bracket, close bracket. And inside here, I pass it the two numbers I want. Now, this can be any two numbers I want. So because I'm adding, I could say 1001. I could say 200, 456. And it doesn't matter what numbers I pass it because I've told it to return me number one plus number two. And because at the very top when I defined it, I said that this was number one and this was number two, it will give me the answer for any numbers I put in. So I'm going to press F5 on my keyboard now. And as you can see, I get my nice value there. Let me type the next one out just so I can explain again and again and again. And hopefully that will make it sink in for some of you guys. Let me put some space. I'm going to say define addition. What's after addition? Normally subtraction. Sub T R A C T I O N. And I'm going to say num1, comma, num2. Now, quick note here, you can reuse the variable names here simply because these are completely different functions. These variables are isolated. These are local variables to that function. So let me quickly go over local and global just because I'm here. So we have a uh, local and we have global, oh, global variables local variables are only usable or only visible within the scope or within that section or that fragment or that function or that method of the entire thing. That's what a local variable is. Whereas a global variable, you can use it anywhere. So let's say um, 
name equals Bob, right? This would be a global variable because it's at the very top of my program and it's not within a function. I can call Bob, I can use Bob, I can make use of Bob from anywhere because I've just put it at the very top. Now there are ways to make local variables to global variables. So I can still make num1 and num2 global, but for now I'm gonna leave it as it is. Simply think of local variables as only usable or visible within the scope of this function, for example. Nowhere else can I use num1 and num2 outside of this. That's why I can call all these variables num1 and num2, but you know what? Let me do something more sensible just so it doesn't confuse people. Let me do sub1 and let me call this one sub2 just so it's, it's, it's very clear. But again, I can keep reusing the name num1 and num2. All right. After that, I'm going to say return. Uh, what did I have here? Sub1 minus uh, sub2. And again, I need to print this because when I run this function, if I just do subtraction, if I do subtraction and I do that, this will give an error because I've not passed it the arguments that I've told it, it needs to have. So this is like your parents saying to you, you need to wear shoes to school and you leave the house with no shoes. Something bad is going to happen, right? Press F5. It tells me two missing arguments. And so let's just say I pass the argument. So I say 100 and I give it 50. So it should be 100 minus 50. This will work. So when I press F5 again, it works. But as you notice, it doesn't actually give me an output because I need to print it. This is where, as I mentioned before, a print and a function, this is the use case for it. So when I do print uh, function name subtraction in this case, and I do 150, I press F5. Now that's when I get a value. What I'll do here as well, I'll do my quotes comma and I'll put in an actual thing to tell me what this is doing. Subtraction and I'll put that there. And for this one, I will do addition quotes comma in here, addition, capital A, press F5 again to run it. Yeah, it looks nice and neat. That's perfectly fine. All right, let's move this up and there. And this one is going to be division. So I'm going to do the same thing again, def, DEF to define the function, to create the function. This one is going to be called division, D-I-V-I-S-I-O-N, open bracket, close bracket. Inside here, I want the things I want to divide, the variable names of the things I want to divide. I'm going to say div1, divide one, obviously, and div2, divide two. So I'm going to pass this function only two arguments. Argument one, I've just called it divide one because it's easy for me to remember because it's, this is a division function. And argument two, I've said divide two, nice and easy. I'm going to say return. So give me the value back when I give you something. I'm going to say return div1 uh, needs to be divide div2. And then I go, I need to go print this now. So print divi division uh, colon there comma and it's going to be um, and it's going to be division. So let's copy that paste that there. The two numbers I want to divide are let's say 10,000. So that's 10,000. And I want to divide it by, let's say three. Why not three, right? And now when I run this, F5 to run, it gives me my value here. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Last one. Now I can copy and paste this to make my life easy, but I want to keep going over and over it again, just so everyone that watches this video un understands it. I'm going to do, what's this one? Multiplication. So I'm going to do DEF to define my function. Did I put comments in at the top? I did. I will do it for the rest of them, but you guys should always put comments in. Define multiplication, open bracket, close bracket, and then put my colon there. Inside here, I'm going to put MUL1 and MUL2. Again, these are the, the arguments I'm passing it. This is when I give it two numbers later on, it's going to do what I need it to do. I'm going to say return MUL1 multiplied by MUL2. I go down here and I do print. I'm going to say multiplication colon comma on the outside of the quotes. And I'm going to say what two numbers do I pass it? Hmm. Let's see. Let's think of two weird, awkward numbers. Uh, let's say 137. That's a weird number. And like 19. Right. So now when I run my program, press F5 on my keyboard, I get my value here. 
So there we go. That's how we do return value in Python. So all these functions do something on the inside. They don't just have to do one thing. So this doesn't, doesn't just have to be divide, right? I can have it do more stuff. I can pass it more arguments as well. But just to simply show you guys how to build up the functionality. So if, if there's anyone out there who's just learning how to program and you guys want to learn how to maybe make a calculator, having two numbers do something, this is how you build up that functionality. Hopefully that was clear enough. And thanks for watching.